I glide through the city, a mohawked shadow. I'm eight and a half feet tall and 280 pounds, but you'll never hear me coming. I go places cars can't, at speeds no human could ever hope to achieve. I'm loved by many, hated by some, and noticed by all. I'm on your mom's bucket list. Am I a superhero? Sort of. I'm a Segway tour guide. <laughs> I'm that motherfucker. <laughs> the one who scares the shit out of you, screaming, on your left, making your tiny dog so goddamn mad you can actually see a little bean pop out on its forehead as it tries to bite my ankle. I follow a storied lineage of great men. Segway men. Men like Paul Blart, mall cop and Joe Bluth. <laughs> I'm the butt of your jokes and the dork of the tour guide industry. If the La Jolla kayak guides are the popular suntan boys and the pedicab drivers are the stoner kids, then I'm the, uh, then I'm the dork who sits alone at lunch uh, writing a semi-erotic short story about that sexy elf from the Dragonlance saga. <laughs> I know you laugh when you see me, but I also know that you kind of want to try it too. <laughs> the reality is my job is awesome. I don't file things, meet deadlines, send emails, or attend meetings. I work outside. My office is the waterfront and Balboa Park. I get to wear shorts and a t-shirt, and at best, I make service industry money without dealing with fucktards who don't understand that please seat yourself, that please wait to be seated means don't seat yourself and then complain that no one has taken your drink order, you fucking asshat. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike servers, I'm perfectly justified in disciplining my guests if I see fit. If they want to give me a hard time, not listen, or otherwise screw around, all I have to do is mention two words, safety concerns. <laughs> and for the particularly difficult, I have a special remote control with a magic little button called turtle mode. If it is determined by me <laughs> that they are a safety hazard, <laughs> I can make their top speed into a humiliating two miles per hour. It makes them look like a special needs transformer, <laughs> morphing into a useless scooter thing that doesn't handle bumps well and has to be charged every few hours. Wait up, guys, I want to fight the Decepticons too. I can help. <laughs> Every week, people ask me if I've seen the Segway blooper videos on YouTube. I don't have to. I see that shit live all day. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Do, do people crash these things? Yes! Epic found fails abound. Blood, Bloodletting, teeth shaking, bone jarring accidents. The, tr the overcautious trophy wife, bam! Down on a crosswalk on 6th <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> That cocky young broker from New York who insists on jumping the curb. Oh, God, that looked bad. <laughs> the bachelorette party who texted through the entire training video and every word I said, down like a line of blonde dominoes, penis necklaces and tiaras everywhere. <laughs> God, ladies, your teeth look like the San Diego skyline. Ooh. <laughs> the most impressive, though, is the family meltdown. <laughs> I love these families. I see them all the time. It was the friend's house you didn't want to visit as a kid because no one talked at dinner. <laughs> the family where mom and dad referred to each other as your mother and your father. They exude tension, barely concealed resentment, and hate every moment of their big San Diego vacation. They crash every time. <laughs> Let me walk you through it. <laughs> 11 a.m., I open up shop and in walk the family. They already look miserable. Dad is stone-faced and stern. Mom is worried and worn, like a washwoman from a Dickens novel. 
<laughs> Daughter is probably 16, dressed like she's 23, and stands as far away from her parents as humanly possible. The son is my only hope for someone to talk to for the next two and a half hours. He looks to be about 12, and he's stoked to get on a Segway. <laughs> I introduce myself with a big smile and a handshake. Dad grunts and turns away. Mom is named Barbara, of course, and informs me that Ryan is very excited about this. I assume that Ryan is the boy because Dad doesn't look like he's been excited about anything since Coors Light came out with the wide mouth can. <laughs> Daughter ignores me, but Barbara introduces her as Morgan. I have him pick out helmets and tell him to grab a bag of chips for the training video. No red-blooded American worth their weight in freedom can turn down a free bag of Doritos, <laughs> which is why we have a giant sign in front of the chips. If you enjoyed your ride, then tip your guide. I swear I can actually hear Dad curse under his breath as he realizes he's been tricked into reading the sign. Goddamn chips, I'm gonna tip this asshole. <laughs> Ten minutes later, I sit them down with waivers. Two pages of legalese effectively waiving me and the company from any responsibility should they do anything dangerous, negligent, or stupid. Dad won't sign until he's read through twice, mumbling the whole time. The only words I can make out are, fucking California. <laughs> <laughs> it's 11.15. I start the training video. A gem of cinematography that features a stick figure on a Segway who crashes around to 600 times. At one point, animated lines of pain wave off of his freshly concussed head. Why we show it to every guest who walks through the door is beyond me. But it's never too late for them to back out. We do offer refunds in the form of a gift certificate good for more Segway tours. <laughs> 11.30. Now that they are sufficiently terrified, it's time to teach them how to ride. The next half hour is a slapstick exercise in awkwardness as I get them up and rolling one by one. Ryan picks it up immediately. Most young boys do because they're reckless and fearless. Morgan catches on quickly but won't stop staring at her shoes, which is a problem when you're operating a 120-pound death machine. I feel bad for her. It's obvious the last thing she wants to be doing is riding segways with her family. Ugh. Dad refuses my help, uttering the only words he'll say to me all day. I got it. <laughs> I let him go and sit back as he runs over a road cone and falls into a railing. <laughs> Morgan laughs so hard she almost falls too, and Dad flashes her a look that makes me think I'm going to get grounded. <laughs> 12 o'clock. Dad is up. Barbara needs a Chardonnay. That's all she says as I run next to her, <laughs> gripping the handlebars of her Segway like a worried father holding onto the seat of his daughter's first bike. She smells like box wine and fear. <laughs> <laughs> Scent of a divorcee. <laughs> After a few attempts and some teeth grinding, she gets it, but informs me that I'm only doing this for my son. <laughs> 12.05. We line up on 3rd and G, poised for what I imagine to be a therapy-inducing disaster. I keep Ryan behind me so I have someone to talk to. At the stoplight, I give him a stick-on mohawk for his helmet, and I put one on mine. I tell him, you look awesome, dude. <laughs> he smiles, no, you look awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we are rebels. <laughs> As we roll up to six, I tell him about the stingery years when people rode horses down the dirt roads of the gas lamp and Wyatt Earp ran three gambling houses. He eats it up. I'm having fun. 12.10. My future wife walks past us on six. <laughs> She's perfect. Long brunette hair with a smile that makes me want to cook for her. <laughs> Ryan turns with a tween curiosity about boobies. I do the same. <laughs> Neither of us have a chance. He is 12, and I am a Segway tour guy. <laughs> no woman in history has ever said, oh my God, that guy on the Segway was so hot. Do you think if I fucked him, he'd let me ride it? No! It's never happened. It never will happen. 
dudes on rollerblades have a better chance than I do. <laughs> Twelve twenty. We make it to Balboa without incident. We park the segways outside of the Museum of Man, and I give them a brief history. We talk about Alonzo Horton, John Spreckles, and the 1915 exhibition. Ryan loops around and around. He has the, uh, the attention span of a gnat. Barbara is intrigued. She laughs at a few of my dumb jokes and seems astounded when I tell her that Balboa is the largest park in America. It's twice the size of Central Park. Morgan and Dad are glued to their iPhones. I expect as much from a 16-year-old, but I'm confused by Dad until Barbara looks over his shoulder and yells, Gerald, are you on Wikipedia? Will you stop fact-checking him? He's a nice guy. <laughs> so Dad is Gerald. Poor fucker. She hasn't called him Jerry for years. <laughs> 1230. As we roll through the Alcazar Garden and Palm Canyon, everyone's mood seems to lighten up a bit. It's a postcard Balboa day full of hummingbirds and butterflies. The air is sweet with honeysuckle, and our ride is serenade serenaded by buskers on fiddle and piano. 75 and sunny. Staying classy. 1240. We're almost in the clear. I just have to take a family photo and herd them back to the gas lamp. We stop outside of the botanical building. I give explicit instructions to leave space between their wheels as they line up for the photo. Barbara is feeling free, smiling and spinning around. She hasn't had this much fun since before the kids were born. Dad is annoyed. Barbara tries to line up next to Dad, but she's going too fast. Her wheels hit his, the segways bounce off of each other, and they both end up on their backs, flailing like epileptic turtles. <laughs> I flip into professional mode and make sure they're okay. They're fine outside of Barbara's scuffed purse. Dad is pacing, running his hands through his hair and breathing deep. He looks like a fat dragon about to blow. <laughs> 12.45. Total fucking meltdown. <laughs> Dad loses it, screaming and yelling that their vacation is ruined. <laughs> Barbara has had enough. <laughs> she yells back. Morgan doesn't bat an eye. She's obviously seen this all before and takes the opportunity to call some friends back home, chatting and laughing like nothing's going on. I call the retired senior volunteer police squad to calm things down. I want nothing to do with this one. They assure me they'll be there as soon as they remember where they parked that golf cart. <laughs> 12.48, Ryan rolls away from the scene. He looks bummed. Hey, Eddie, he says, can we still go for a little ride? Of course, let's do it. That smile is back. I feel for the kid. He's about the same age I was when my parents got divorced. 12.50, we race down the promenade laughing. I stop at the fountain and point out the rose and desert gardens. I tell him that Dr. Seuss used to draw in the desert garden, and we stand up on the ledge for a better view. Look past the garden, Ryan, past the canyon. You see all that? That's the rest of Balboa Park, buddy. And over there, that's my neighborhood, North Park. Ryan smiles. He looks like he should be in a juice commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, when I grow up, I want to move to San Diego and be a Segway tour guide <laughs> like you. <laughs> I pat him on the back, feeling like a Segway superhero. <laughs> Shit, yeah, kid. Dare to dream. <laughs> Eddie Duell.